To be honest, I wasn't actually sure what to make a video about this week, but then I had an idea. There is this one thing that I do to uh, some of my stock footage that is sort of backwards to how everyone else uh, usually does it. As I'm sure you know, most people remove green screens in post. I actually add the green screen. <laughs> Let me explain. Here's the thing, when I shoot stock footage, there are um, a lot of moments where I shoot people using technology like laptops or phones, and different types of devices with uh, screens on them. And obviously when it's for a stock site, I can't use whatever they're actually showing on the screen. Plus, I want to add the option for any potential customer that buys the footage to add their own material into that screen. Makes sense, right? And I know, I know what you're thinking right now. Why aren't I just shooting the device with a green screen on it already? That's a good question. I have done that. There are a few uh, problems uh, with this. The green light from these screens are going to spill all over your scene. You're going to see it on your model's hands, you're going to see it on your model's face, it will be everywhere. And that can pretty much ruin your color correction later on. To save myself the trouble of, you know, trying to uh, color grade a, a shot where everyone's green, I create another type of work for myself instead. And that is tracking these screens and adding a green screen uh, in post instead. Personally, I just find it easier uh, to handle. Even though it might be uh, quite a lot of work sometimes. A lot of work. Sometimes. Thankfully though, there are some pretty good tools for tracking and adding things like green screens in your footage. What I usually like to use for this is Mocha inside of After Effects. Uh, yes, we will be taking a little break from DaVinci this week. I'm sure there's a way to do this in DaVinci as well, so maybe there'll be a follow-up video uh, when I've figured that out. But for now, let's grab, let's grab some footage of a laptop that I already have uh, without a screen, uh, without a green screen. We'll track the laptop, We'll throw in a green screen, and that's, that's it. That's it, oh, that's easy. I was ready to do this whole explanation about what I'm supposed to be doing in this video, but it's, it's not that much really. Uh, all right, so here we are in After Effects. As you can see, I've already thrown a clip in here uh, that has a screen that I've already replaced, but let's just pretend that this is a screen that we need to uh, remove and replace with a chroma key green screen. So first thing that we need to do is the screen that we're going to put in here needs to have the same, uh, same resolution as uh, the video that we're working in. So I have a JPEG right here um, that I'm going to drag into this comp. As you can see, it's not the right size. It does not fit the comp that we're already working in. So I'm going to right click on this. Uh, go to transform and I'm going to change this to fit to comp. There we go. I'm going to pre-compose this, move all attributes into the new composition. I'm just gonna, for simplicity, call this chroma key green. green. There we go. Uh, turn that layer off for now. Then select the layer with our uh, laptop in it. I'm going to jump on over to the Effects and Presets tab and search for Mocha. We'll drag that onto our video. Click the logo up here in the corner and Mocha AE is going to boot up. I'm going to uh, register later. <laughs> when tracking uh, footage, it's always, a good, it's always a good practice to start in the middle and then track backwards and track forwards. So, in the middle of this clip, I'm going to draw around our screen. This is the area that we will be tracking. Something like that. I'm going to jump down here and check the perspective tab. I'm also going to increase the minimal pixels used a little bit. Probably not needed, but hey, why not? Uh, then this right here, is going to be our screen. I'm also going to hit the grid just so I can see the, how it looks. And I'm also going to hit a magnifying glass. That way I can see more precisely what we are doing. So what I want to do is find the edges of 
this screen. Just, I think that looks, oh, oops, sorry. Oh, no, 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 what am I doing? I think that looks pretty good. Just double, double check these, give us some, give us some wiggle room. You know, maybe something like that. That looks okay. Uh, what we can also do is jump over to adjust track. Make sure these are checked. Hit set points. These are sort of like a backup track. So what I like to do with these is I track a different point for each of these as a reference. Hopefully these are good enough. Usually what I might do is I put some tape on the screen. Uh, that'll be extra uh, trackers for the adjust track function. Mm, this one, maybe I'll leave this one on the corner right here. And we're just gonna hit set reference frame. We'll jump over to the track. Uh, and we'll start uh, tracking backwards. Mocha is gonna work its way through this clip, tracking our screen. So far, it looks pretty good. Now, if you remember the video I made not long ago, we were tracking faces in Da Vinci. I'm sure you can tell how much slower this is than it was to track in Da Vinci Resolve. Sure, we're not doing the same thing, but still. All right, so we're at the uh, beginning of this clip. I think the track looks really good, but I'm going to jump over to the adjust track tab uh, just in case. As you can see, the reference track point, the point has moved a little bit from the reference frame. So we're just gonna jump through these. I'm gonna hit auto, and that's gonna jump in place. We're gonna go to the next point. See, also moved a little bit, hit auto, much better. Here it kind of looks okay, but let's hit auto anyway. Just have a look. I think the screen looks okay. It might have moved a little slightly up here, but that's because I don't think these rounded points are very, they're not perfect points to track for the adjust track um, feature. But anyway, we'll just leave it at that. You can learn from my mistakes. Uh, we'll jump back to uh, track. We're gonna go to the back to the middle again, and this time I'm gonna track it forward. You alright? Good. Cars, cars alright? Cars rolling and good. Kids are, kids are happy. Good and uh, we're done. <laughs> Just like last time, it looks quite all right. You can see that the screen sort of shifted down here in the corner. So I'm gonna jump back to the adjust track. Do the same thing as before. Move through all of these and hit the auto button. That looks better. I think we still moved a little bit, but that's fine. Save this. Also rename this later as screen. That's just good for our own sake. Save, and we can just quit this. All right, so we're back in After Effects. We're just going to extend these. Uh, 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 we're going to hit Create Track Data. Screen is selected, we're gonna hit OK. Now, as you can see, After Effects has important, important, get out of here, has imported these uh, as uh, keyframes. So we can, what we can do now is we turn on the chroma key green screen layer again, uh, go back to the video that we tracked, and down here at the bottom, uh, we'll hit, we're going to change this export option to corner pin to support motion blur, because this is a handheld shot, there's a lot of motion blur, and we want that to affect uh, this, uh, this, this layer as well. Uh, we're going to choose the layer that we want to export this to, and that's the chroma key green screen layer and we're going to hit Apply Export. There we go. 
So if we preview this now, you're going to see that we're done. I think we can see that my screen is sort of moving a little bit. I didn't do a perfect job at tracking that screen. But I think you get the point. Yeah, and that's it. It's actually a super simple process. Uh, what I would do now is to turn on uh, motion blur for that layer, of course. Now, if you want to change the contents of this screen, you can just, you know, drag in whatever clip you want to. <laughs> I don't have any other clips in this uh, project, so I'm just going to grab this file again. Uh, and we're going back to the main layer. Uh, we'll turn the green screen off. Uh, we're just going to change this from the chroma key to the other video. Hit apply export. There we go. I do admit that it's not looking great right now because the glow from the previous screen is still in this video, uh, which is not ultimate. If you run across this problem as well, that you have like glowing parts from your screen left, uh, but your clip isn't glowing, what I would probably do is create a adjustment layer. Uh, and again, I would create, I would go back to the main layer. I would create a mask from the track that we made. And that's going to end up on this main layer. So we're going to go to the mask, cut that mask out, paste that onto our uh, adjustment layer. It's important, we're in, it's important we're in the beginning of the timeline when we paste uh, that mask back. I'm probably going to search for uh, glow, maybe this one, that's too much, but uh, make the mask a little bit softer, there we go, take down the glow, maybe the threshold, not perfect but it's better. I think you get what I'm trying to do here. I'm just trying to make make it look like this screen is actually giving off that clip. Anyway, just a bonus, not really a part of this uh, tutorial, but feel free to play around. I think you get what I'm trying to do. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you uh, uh, learned something useful in this video. It is a pretty useful technique to, to master, for sure. And with that, I'm going to end this video. I need to... Uh, clean my office, because as you can see, it is um, quite a mess. Um, it doesn't usually look like this, I promise. I don't know what happened. Take care of yourself and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.